what styles are and the basic steps needed to create a style from the original InDesign class. So for the advanced InDesign class, we want to talk about nesting styles. How do we go above and beyond? How do we use styles in an advanced way to increase the efficiency and the speed of our design process? We're going to do that by using nested styles. Styles can be nested in a similar way to how master pages are nested. The nesting process serves the same purpose. It allows InDesign users to repeat some attributes of one object and a different attribute of another while maintaining an efficient workflow process. For example, if all picture frames have a three-point stroke and a drop shadow, but some are red and others are blue, we can use nested styles to maintain the integrity of the automation of the stroke weight, drop shadow, and stroke color, so that if any of these attributes are changed via style modifications, they will all change appropriately. The basic steps needed to nest styles are, first, identify how your styles will interact, which attributes are common and which are different. So if we go back to our example, the stroke thickness, the stroke type, and the rounded corners are all the same. Oh, and on the drop shadow, the only thing that's different is the color. Establish a nesting styles game plan. Be able to explain how the nesting will work before starting to create your styles. Create the first style for the style that will be common to multiple other styles. In our example, it will be a style containing the three point stroke and the drop shadow. I'll also make the stroke either red or blue because the stroke must have a color. I'm going to choose red and then my nested style, I'll change the color to blue. Four, create a second new style that will contain similar attributes. Deselect everything from your workspace. With nothing selected, choose the style you'd like the new style to be based on. In my example, it will be the red picture frame style. Choose the new style button at the bottom of the object, uh, object paragraph, etc. styles panel. Five, use the style options dialog box, so double click on the style, to make sure that the based on option is based on the first style that you created. Mine will be based on the red picture frames. After the second style is based on the first, use the style options dialog box to name your style and edit it to your liking. For example, if we make the first style with a red stroke, I will change the second one to have a blue stroke. Making the second style based on the first style means it'll have all of the attributes of the first style until I change or I break those connections. So the second style is going to be red, it's going to have a solid stroke and a drop shadow. But as soon as I tell it that the stroke color should be blue, I will disconnect that, that connection. And then from now on, the red stroke and the blue stroke are different, but the thickness of the stroke and the rounded corners on the frame and the drop shadow will all remain linked if I was to change them in the original style. So here is an example of how you would create the styles. So first, format your first object 100% the way that you want it to be. When you have it selected, create a new style. It'll be an object style, and we're always going to immediately double click the style. I will name it red picture frame and select OK. We should already know that from earlier in the lecture. Once you have the first style, you can apply it to all the pictures that you're going to use in your project. If then you decide that you want some of the pictures to have blue frames and some to have red, you can then create a second style and make it based on the first one. If you decide to do that, it's my recommendation that you deselect all of your pictures, make sure none are selected, select the red picture frame style and create a new style. When you do that, it will give you object style one, it'll create a new generic style, you can immediately double click on it and you can call it blue picture frames. But notice how by default it will be based on red picture frames. That's because I had the red picture frame selected when I created it. I recommend you do it this way because then all of the attributes of the red picture frame are automatically linked to the blue picture frame. If you create the style first and then come in here and change it and make it based on, it makes it more complicated to link the different attributes. Because the object style is based on the red frame, so I'm still in the blue picture frame style, all the attributes are automatically linked. But if you look on the left-hand side, 
everything that you would want to edit outside of this dialog box is present inside the dialog box. So if I wanted to change the stroke to be blue instead of red, I just need to find the stroke option. The things that are available to change will update and you can change the stroke color from red to be blue. When you select OK, all of the picture frames that are linked to that style will then become blue. However, we don't have any objects that are currently linked to blue, so when you hit OK, and if you're following along, nothing should change blue just yet. Also of note, because I did not change any of the other settings, every other setting for that, sh that object style is still linked to the red picture frames, so if I was to modify the red picture frame style in any way, those changes would flow downhill to my blue picture frame. Notice here that after I have my two object styles selected, red picture frames and blue picture frames, I've decided to apply them to some. So the red is applied to five of the picture frames and blue is applied to three. Because I nested or I linked the blue master page to the red master page, they're forever bonded, right? They're connected in some way. So if I start to edit or modify these styles, um, the changes will flow downhill. So modifying the blue picture frame style will not affect the red ones in any way whatsoever. But since the red master frame is kind of high art on the top of the hierarchy, if I change anything about the red picture frame, it'll flow downhill to the blue one, except for things that I've broken the connection to. So if I change the red picture frames to be pink, the blue picture frames will not automatically change in color. So you can see here, that if I modify the red uh, object style, so I modified the red one in this case to have a squiggly red border, it automatically updated all of the blue frames to also have a squiggly border because the stroke type is not broken. It's a straight, consistent, like five point stroke on every frame. So if I make the change on the red style, it automatically flows down to the blue ones. And so if I change it to be a beveled, uh, corner option, it will automatically flow downhill. If you change it to be, uh, if you change the drop shadow color, so up here I added a yellow drop shadow. If I change it to be black again, it will automatically flow downhill because I haven't broken the connection between anything between the red and blue style except for the color of the stroke.